Well folks, it looks like the virus has won. I never thought I'd see the day where the total number of cases would be greater than the number of streams on Live in La Vida Loca. It's really the perfect song for this time. We're living the crazy life. On today's episode, we'll be looking at COVID-19 updates, arrests in Hong Kong, the explosion in Lebanon, a fateful plane crash in India, Joe Biden's new running mate, and finally, cat diplomacy in the UK. Welcome to Headlines. Hong Kong announced free voluntary COVID-19 testing. The test will be administered by three Chinese companies, BGI, KingMed, and Hong Kong Molecular. Chief Executive Carrie Lam has clarified that the samples provided will be analyzed electronically to ensure safety and privacy for all individuals being tested. This was a response to concerns about the potential drawbacks of the test being administered by Chinese companies. Russia is rolling out an unproven vaccine as President Vladimir Putin announced his approval of the drug. Who was one of the first patients? His daughter. You know, Vlad should really win father of the year. That man really knows how to get father-child bonding time right. In terms of COVID-19 numbers, the USA, Brazil, India, Russia and South Africa continue to lead the way. And in total, the world has hit 20 million cases. In Hong Kong, police arrested Jimmy Lai, the founder of pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily, on the grounds of suspected collusion with foreign forces in violation of the national security law in Hong Kong. China immediately declared Lai guilty through their own news outlets. The move drew widespread criticism from many Hong Kongers, and on Tuesday morning, thousands of people bought copies of the latest issue of Apple Daily to show their solidarity with the tabloid and its founder. Demand was so high that Apple Daily decided to add another 200,000 copies on top of the 350,000 they originally printed. Also, shares in Next Digital, Lai's company, rose fourfold. We're not sure why, and we can't speculate. In addition to Mr. Lai, former student activist Agnes Chow was also arrested on suspicion of collusion with foreign forces to endanger national security. Both Lai and Chow were released on bail on Tuesday. A state of emergency was declared in Lebanon after that huge explosion at a port in Beirut. The blast was felt in Cyprus, a whopping 240 kilometers away. It was so massive that it actually brought Cyprus, a nation smaller than a shoebox, into world headlines. The blast killed at least 135 people in Lebanon, injured 5,000 and left 300,000 homeless. Satellite images highlight complete devastation in the port area where the blast took place, with one ship apparently even being blown out of the water and onto the docks. The cause of the blast was a fire in a warehouse holding 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate, which is a chemical used in fertilizers and bombs. This highly explosive stockpile had lain unused and neglected for six years after being confiscated from another unknown group. People took to the streets in rage, and the entire Lebanese government has resigned. In India, 18 people died when an Air India Express 737-800 skidded off the runway of Calicut Airport. The flight was operating under India's COVID-19 repatriation program, which helps people stranded abroad return to the country. The flight was bringing home passengers from Dubai. The exact cause of the crash is unknown, but it's being attributed to the heavy monsoon season rainfall and the tabletop runway where the incident had happened. As a result of the runway, the plane overshot and tumbled into a 10-meter ditch, which caused it to split into two. Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India has expressed his sympathy for all those who've been affected by the crash, saying that he was, quote, pained by the accident. Former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden named California Senator Kamala Harris as his running mate to face off against U.S. President Donald Trump in the November 2020 elections. If Joe Biden wins, Kamala Harris will be the first woman of color to be vice president. Her parents are immigrants from Jamaica and India. Obviously, many are overjoyed. However, some are shocked. And by some, I mean Big Orange himself. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would destroy America, and sleepy Joe Biden and phony Kamala Harris were just two of the many attacks tossed by President Trump from the White House when Joe Biden made his announcement. To top that off, Trump managed to alienate every woman across the US under the age of about 70 with a tweet saying that suburban housewives would vote for him. Then he managed to alienate everyone of limited income, saying, quote, they want safety and are thrilled that I ended the long-running program where low-income housing would invade their neighborhoods. 
And finally, Trump being himself went for the hat-trick, alienating non-whites by adding that Biden would put Senator Cory Booker, who was African-American, in charge. Your racism is showing, Booker replied. But back to Harris and Biden. At the end of the day, what do you get when you put the coolest grandpa in the world and a progressive politician together? I don't know, but it's bound to be something awesome. Fingers crossed. To brighten your day, here's an odd piece from the UK. The country's top diplomatic cat, Palmerston, has retired. The chief mouser at the UK Foreign Office arrived in April 2016 as a rescue cat, and over the last four years, he showed us all that four legs and fur have an important part to play in the UK's international affairs. Palmerston was responsible for keeping a sharp eye on all of the office's workers, and he would often be spotted horsing around with Larry, cat in residence at nearby 10 Downing Street. But it looks like Palmerston had a jolly good time during quarantine. So good that he decided to leave the important diplomatic work to the professionals. The cat sent in this official letter in his name to Simon McDonald, the office's permanent undersecretary, which explained that Palmerston wanted more time away from the limelight. The letter, signed with two paw prints, said that Palmerston found life away from the front line relaxed, quieter and easier, and will be doing ordinary cat things from now on. On that note, those are your headlines for this week. I'll see you next time on Headlines.